truth. Everybody, welcome Shanice to the show. She's very cool. This is your baby, by the way, your baby son, Montrell. At 17, she put her dreams of graduating high school and becoming a registered nurse on hold because of this guy, 16-year-old KJ. Stop lying. It's not his fault. See? Remember. Okay, let me break this down for you, okay? We got what we call the system and the whore. The whore uses the system in order to get money um, to pay for her education and to start her career. This young lady is using this guy um, unbeknownst to him. He's nothing but a sperm donor who later graduates to become financial aid or um, a financial provider. She and her mother and you'll always notice that there's a mother in the background are uh, after this guy for child support so that she can get um, financial aid to go to school and further her career you will notice that in order this this um, young lady is the um, caterpillar stage to the um, strong black woman this is where she starts she starts off as the um, so-called contrite victim of this young man's lust because she had this uh, um, you know she's she's usually an honor student an honor roll student with straight A's and you know uh, with scholarships and all that stuff and here this young guy comes and interferes with it by um, having sex with her and knocking her up that's the lie that's the biggest lie going on out here that girl had sex with this young guy because that's what she wanted and she had a baby because that's what she wanted. If she's such a scholar and such a straight A student and um, studying medicine, why don't she know that unprotected sex will get you pregnant? Stop lying. But now that he's here, KJ needs to step up and be a dad, you see? <laughs> yeah, feminist rhetoric. They always talk about the man stepping up, you know? Why don't the woman step up and stop getting pregnant? Now, she's 17, and this kid is only, only 16, which means the baby is already born. He must have been 15 when she got pregnant. She must have been 16. It, it's all the same joke, you know? Look at this kid. Nobody cares about the future that he got. They're only thinking about her because she got the baby. And his life would be destroyed while hers is built up. This is what happens. She goes to school and she enrolls for all these female-based programs that help her get off of welfare. They'll help her with job training. They'll help her with college education and everything. And by the time, 10 years from now, when he's 26 and she's 27, she will be in a much better financial state than he is. You know why? Because his money will be transferred to her uh, for the baby's sake. Denise believes the reason that KJ isn't owning up to his responsibilities is because of his family. And particularly his grandmother, Audrey. Take a mm -hmm. look at the story. It's hard being a 17-year-old single mother. And no, it's, it's not. It's harder being a single mother without the baby father. No, it's not. Easiest thing in the world. I wish these women would stop lying. Look at all the help she get. She talking about how hard it is to be a 17-year-old single, uh, 17 year old single mother. If it was so hard, why, so, why, so, why are so many people doing it? I tell you what's hard. It's hard to be a 17-year-old virgin. How about that one? That one is almost impossible. I'll tell you what else is hard. It's hard to be a 17-year-old or an 18-year-old virgin who gets married. How about that one? How about an 18-year-old with a baby who, who uh, lost her virginity on her wedding night? Now that's hard, you know. Don't talk about no 17-year-old baby, uh, the baby mama. They got 12-year-olds, 11-year-olds, sometimes 10-year-olds having babies, you know. It's not hard. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. The, the problem is not having babies. The, the problem is maintaining a relationship that leads to marriage and sustained marriage till death do us part. 
That's the hard part. That's where they fall short. No, he can't. See, they they, they go to lie again. He can't do that because your plans by going to school and having a baby separates him financially from his plans. So whatever future he had, you just interfere with it by getting pregnant. See, you you um leaning on and the boy is is a is a minor of all things. He's only sixteen years old. That should tell you something. What is he supposed to do as far as supporting a child when he doesn't even he can't get a driver's license or get a job for that matter. But yet you want him to step up and man up. <laughs> Be a man and not a boy. He should stop listening to his grandmother and do what's right for our baby. Look at this stupid woman, see what I'm saying? See? His life is forfeit. Now, he should step up to the plate and be a man for our baby and stop listening to his grandmother, the only person it seems in this world who's trying to protect him. So at 17, 16, 15, 12, you know basic biology. You have sex, babies come. Why is it he's the one that said for when you should know more about biology than him? Come on, man. Stop playing these games, man. You know damn well that you wanted a baby and that's your means of getting financial aid so you can finish school. I need they need to stop this. As my man, um, Ed Lover would say, come on, son. Come on, son. He told me to get an abortion because he didn't want his family to find out. What is... Shame's Anatomy. All right? This is the point that I made in the book, Shame's Anatomy. Because, see, the boy um, feels no recourse except to have an abortion. And even though that's to take another human life... He believed that's his only recourse because nobody is going to help him. When it comes to finances, for the next 20 years at least, he would be obligated to, to um, partner with at least 20% of his income for a, for a minimum of 21 years and more if the child goes to college. See, this woman knows that. That's why at the age of 17, by the time she's 19 or maybe 20, it's highly likely that she'll have another child because that's another food supply. Well, I got a call from his grandmother and she called me and she said my baby doesn't look like him. His grandmother is here. You know that? Yeah. Audrey? Hi, Audrey. How are you? Hi, Mari. How are you? Nice to see you. Do you think that child's your grandbaby? Mari, I really can't say one way or the other. I'm happy that we found out about this. Uh, my grandson has been buying pampers with the allowance that I gave him. My grandson's not a deadbeat. We're not a deadbeat family. I told you over the phone. I never, when I told you over the phone, I told you, I said, let's be sure with the DNA test. And so if your this son but, turns out to be yeah. my great-grandson, I would assist you so you can go to school and make something out of it. See that? See the point? It's all about helping the woman, see? Now, what about the kid? If she already mentioned the fact that this 16-year-old kid is not a deadbeat, he has no right having the responsibility of trying to raise a child. You know, father at 16, it shouldn't be nowhere near this kid. Nobody's considering the, the needs of the, of the boy, of the young man. Everybody's considering her needs, and she's wicked. You know, I'm not, you know, I don't want to be quick to judge her as being evil. But it's a conspiracy against the black men and young men in general. With, and basically all men in general with this child support scam. 
because she knew exactly what she's doing. Even though she's looking contrite and trying to play the role of innocent victim, she knew when she had sex with that boy that she was going to get pregnant. You can't have it both ways to be an outstanding scholar and majoring in biology of all things and have sex with somebody and think that you're not going to get pregnant. So the moment that she started having unprotected sex with this kid, she knew what she was doing. Now it's up to us to see how this turns out. It's a possibility that I'm the father of this child, and it's a possibility that I'm not. I was only 14 when she first told me she was pregnant, and my first thought was, I'm not ready for a child right now. I know I was wrong with behind she needs and a baby from my family, but I was young, and I didn't know how to deal with the situation at the time. My grandma had nothing to do with this situation. If you're my child, I'm going to take care of my responsibility. Shanice, if this is not my child, you have no reason to contact me whatsoever. Everybody, welcome KJ to the show. Here's KJ. So this is what I get out of this, KJ, without even talking to you. This was a terrible mistake, right? Look at this kid, man. He looks like a decent young man. You notice his pants ain't falling off. He ain't talking slang like no, like a gangbanger or none of that. He look like a guy who has a pretty good future. He might be, you know, pretty smart and everything. And look like he might have a chance out of life. Why is he hooked up with this skeezer who all she wanna, all she thinking about is breeding babies and stuff to further her career? Yeah, yeah, right. And. Where's daddy? You don't see no men. Every time you see this, this is a self-repeating problem here. You never see a, any fathers involved. There's always mother, grandmother, and, and the girl, and the baby, and the responsibility on the man, how he's a deadbeat, and how he need to man up and everything. But you don't see no men around the woman, even the grandmother. It would be nice if she was sitting there with her with her husband and saying that this is not common in our family and we want to do whatever we can to make to rectify this. In the old days, there would have been a father with a with a shotgun who would have said, "Oh, now that you knocked up my daughter, it's time for you to do the right thing," which would have been get married and then when you reach um, 18 or something like that sign up for the military or something like that and get a career where you could be able to take care of your wife and your child you know that's the problem with our community with the black community is we keep letting this stuff happen we let everybody off the hook and they run to the government and the government sustains it you know there's no honor anymore all it is is about feeding children if you're the father you're prepared to take care of that baby Yes, sir, y'all, man, I'm out of my Clap, clap, clap. What about that woman? Okay, Audrey, we're going to find out right now. Yeah, she's free to breathe with somebody else. If he's the father, that's all it is. One food source to another. In the case of 11-month-old Montreal, KJ, you are not. Debt cancellation, see? That's what that represent. They not relieved that that boy's not the father. They relieved that the financial burden of dealing with that child has just been erased. So for 21 years, he don't, she don't basically have to dig into her pocket to feed um the, her great grandson. And another thing, because the boy's mother's not there, obviously this woman, the grandmother, is raising the kid, which means that she is already uh, accustomed to dealing with this you know our our people are, are so broken that we're used to grandma raising mama's baby while mama just keep running around breeding and stuff until she get tired what happens when this woman is no longer able to produce i mean to provide for not just a grandson but for anybody what happens if she get ill who going to take care of her yeah we're a sick people man
Gotta go find somebody else. Let the sign say, next. This is Vanguard for Key with the Mantle of Valor. Peace. And remember, protect yourself at all times. Better yet, get married, stay married, and stop playing the divorce and child support game. I'm out of here. I had to add this part um, as an addendum because uh, I didn't get to look at the whole show. And see uh, the end where the um, the final reaction. Oh, I just need to share this with you. Early, 17 year old Shanice came to the show. Check it out. To a 16 year old boy named KJ that he was the father of her baby boy. I don't want to be no single mom because you're the way so much. Oh. <laughs> KJ actually kept the baby a secret from his whole family, including his grandmother, Audrey. That you were just scared to tell them. I didn't know how to handle the situation. Yeah, you were 14, 15 years old. I was that... young too. I know. The DNA test results were in, and they shocked everyone. KJ, you are not. Now, that girl knows she was having sex with somebody else. Why is it that she's so convinced that um, that boy was the father when she knew she was having sex with somebody else? But you need to see the end of this. I missed it the first time. Backstage, Shanice was comforted by KJ's grandmother, Audrey, and by her own mother. My son don't have no fun. I am his father. No, you not. See, this here, that statement, the I am the mother and the father, that God complex that these silly women have, this is why there's no money, there's no power, and there's no honor and dignity in the black community. It's... Those were that type of statement by woman. Now look again. Look at the picture. The 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 story. The episode is about the young this woman here with the um young kid, and he's supposed to be the deadbeat teenage dad. But look at everybody comforting this whore who tried to deceive this young man into being a father way before he was ready. You know. She's not even in a relationship with the guy. She got pregnant. Oops, I made a mistake. And bang, you got to start giving me some money to take care of the kid. That's her plan. And look who's helping her. Even though the woman has been found guilty as charged, the, the other woman, the matriarch, is still manifesting itself because they're still trying to reassure the criminal that She's a victim. There you go. The the grandmother, it seems to me, is the only person who has uh, an inkling of the truth in her. Too bad that these women are not represent, represented by strong men because you wouldn't have that up there or the likelihood of this happening would be diminished. It's a shame. This is what happens when women rule. This is um, Isaiah uh, chapter 3 verse 12 where it says, As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over you. This is what female head of house leads to. Child support and court orders and single motherhood. So for now, this is Vanguard for Keeps with the Mantle of Valor signing out and wishing you peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope Shanice does all she can to have her baby grow up with a father in his life. Keep watching to see if she tests another man. Until next time, America.